Okay, so now I come back to the more, I say, down earth uh, issue of the mystery of dark matter, and uh, I will try from a more astrophysical point of view and uh, to say what we really know and what we could uh, learn in the near future. So the first, uh, of course, I am going to, to thank the, organize, the organizer to have me invited here. So first of all, I, do not, I also have to, uh, to thank uh, Joe and also others which have introduced me uh, in the morning the, the concept of the matter and many, many aspects in which then I can immediately uh, pass to certain result without des describing again uh, I mean the field. So I think that everyone agrees that is the main protagonist of the universe for many, many aspects, in many, many cases, and the supermassive black hole are extraordinary sources of energy that uh, may also relate with some aspect of the matter. Okay, the most important thing that I have to say is galaxies. At a small scale, dark matter resides in galaxies. Most of the dark matter, if exists, will reside, will stay in galaxies. But galaxies, they are not all alike. In particular, I would like to point out the fact that you have the magnitude of the galaxies, so the luminosity, the number of stars, and the self-surface density. So you see the elliptical galaxies, they stay there. Spiral galaxies are there, dwarfs, they, they occupy this region. Low surface brightness, they occupy this region. So we are talking about uh, uh, something like uh, 1,000 in luminosity, even more. And uh, we are talking uh, about very, very different in surface density. So how dense is the center of the galaxy? And also the morphology. The morphology is very different. We have disk system, we have uh, elliptical system, uh, we have a spherical system. So if uh, the, the, the important thing is the question, uh, I don't know how the dark matter is distributed at this point in the galaxy, but certainly the luminous matter is distributed in a very, very different way. Of course, not too different in the sense that uh, the, the families, they are not 1,000, the families, they are few, but they are quite different. So that, that matter comes on the fact that, uh, as I say, you, you have a way to measure the uh, potential well uh, or the gravitational potential through motions of the galaxy. You have anomalous motions in galaxies, for instance, this is uh, Andromeda. In this case, uh, is, uh, this is the observed rotation curve. This is more or less the predicted. And this uh, difference is uh, uh, assigned by astronomers and astrophysicists to the presence of particle which does not emit any light. So here there is a lot of this particle mass, but I don't see anything because do not, does not emit light. In reality, the situation is more complex. So not so very complex, but more complex that the distribution of a certain phenomenology. For instance, if you look, for instance, we have about uh, thousand of individual rotation curve. One sees that all, if you don't the luminosity of the galaxy or the mass of the galaxy, all, ga all galaxies will show the same rotation curve. For instance, at the low luminosity, they will have this. At the other side, so if you take all the bigger galaxies and you put together all the rotation curve, they will stay in the same line. You can see this both in, the say, individual. Another thing when you quad together, so the individual, of course, you can do it so only with when you have the best data. At the moment, you have this by no more than 300 galaxies. Different when you have data which are not perfect in the sense that the, error, the internal error bar, they are not zero, you can quad all together and you find exactly the same thing. So therefore there is a family no? which is called the universal rotation curve, which goes from the, uh, the smallest one, which are rising and then they flatten out at very, very large radii, 
and the biggest one, they behave exactly like uh, a, as the Dharmata will not be, and you can see the presence of Dharmata only far away. This was well known by 20 years, and uh, has to be immediately matched with what we think from the Lambda CDM scenario, number zero. So in the sense that you take only the antibody simulation and the density profile. This is very, very important and crucial prediction by colder matter, the fact that all the realized objects in the universe, there are simply a balls, if we say, of spheres or such density. Of course, this is what we, we it comes from the theory, and until now, a cold, a cold particle has been certainly the main uh, favorite and maybe the strongest f particle which had the theoretical justification. Of course, one can say differently, then I take the matter directly from the data, so I can uh, the matter density profile directly from the data independently of prediction and simulations. So then there are two possibilities. Then you have a rotation curve, you can analyze very carefully, and uh, not all of them, of course, they have to be, uh, they, they have to have intrinsically good quality, and uh, with two different profiles. One profile, which is the one which was, by the way, used before the, pro the, the profile came in from simulations, and the profile which came from simulation. So it's not a surprise for you that in spiral galaxies, this, okay, the NFW profile, so the profile from Lambda CDM, it doesn't fit the profile that you observe. Not only it doesn't fit one, but because in this case you have unique, in these units, the velocity as function of video velocity, a radius as function of video radius. So the prediction is, is almost equal, it's most, it's most one profile. So the, the universal coming from lambda CDM is even more universal than the observation one. The observation one shows a family no? the, that all of them are different from the prediction. More important, what comes from uh, the observations is that the fraction of dark matter inside the galaxy, inside the, the luminous part of the galaxy, the central halo density and the core radius, and also the luminosity, they are related. So you have a four-dimensional uh, volume, and which really reduces to really a line. It is a line in which all galaxies, all spiral galaxies, stays on this line. This is not easy I mean, explanation at this point because, as you say, we are mixing properties which depend on the dark matter, like the halo central density, with properties that depend on the luminous matter as the luminosity, and properties that are hybrid, like the fraction of dark matter. In practice, okay, so in practice, they what comes from the analysis of many, many galaxies is that uh, this is the density as function of radius for different masses. Okay, and this is the prediction from the lambda CDM zero. And uh, in one of the relations that we have found from observation, we have something which is unexplainable easily. So we have the fact that the central density of the dark matter is related to the disk mass. Okay? So this is something which comes, but we don't have a direct, in, in at least, explanation. Since uh, they say to, to say that individual, that, that lambda CDM doesn't work is so important, we have tried, uh, other people, have tried to do this not only with uh, a co the rotation curve, but also with individual objects, looking one by one. So there are many, many uh, of these works in the past 10 years, and in all cases uh, is the same. So now the, the question, the result is 100 for CORED, zero for NFW profile. So I think that at, at this the evidence of any Masses. I want to show that there are methods which are able to get the, 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 to investigate the profile of dark matter also for galaxies which are quite big with the velocity, the maximum velocity of 300 kilometers per second. So we have, okay, the evidence could be 
from 5 sigma to 1000 sigma, but for spiral, as spiral are concerned, there is uh, no way to, uh, so the day core, the models are greatly, greatly favored. So the solution. So the solution is important because one part of the solution is to stay within the dark matter, the cold dark matter, because the particle still, one could think that the justification per the particle is stronger than any other. So as I said, as I said the simulation, the predict is, this is not what comes from observations, and there is a way to have uh, the response of the dark halo to galaxy formation. So we want to say, okay, one thing is the simulations which comes from any body, just any body, but when you go and you come and uh, you form the galaxy, there are baryons which go there, you form stars, uh, and then it is, it, these stars also may evolve and, and may uh, uh, transform in supernova, and so, so, so. This does change the dark matter distribution, and in particular is compatible with uh, the, what uh, we observe. Okay, the idea that can change is being proven by many, in many work, but certainly there are two problems. So this is the baryon, at least two problems. The baryon feedback works for normal galaxy, but okay, this is the original profile that you have in the density distribution of the dark matter, so it's minus 1.5. This is the observed one, okay? And this is the one which has been produced through feedback. Hydro, we call it the hydro, this is the point. But when, this is a function of the mass of the object. So you have here dark dwarf galaxies, and here you have giant galaxies. So the problem is, in this case, there are not many stars to change the original profile to get uh, that the profile is near to zero, as we observe. We observe, in all cases, near to zero. The same thing applies to giant galaxies, because uh, in the giant galaxies, the potential well is so small, is so big, that supernova, they really cannot uh, they, uh, change the total gravitational field. So in these cases, which correspond to the normal galaxies, like our own, then there is the possibility, at least for, for certain, uh, in certain author, there is a possibility to the fact that the baryons do the job. So now we study, recently, so the fact that we want to find a new channel to investigate this. Because uh, the point is that the dynamic distribution shallower than those uh, or, or which one comes from any body simulation are seen, are seen in, in any kind of galaxies. So the new channel which comes uh, is uh, the dwarf, spheroid, dwarf spiral around our own galaxy. So we have uh, a number, we have about 36 objects, which stays uh, within 10 megaparsec of our own, and the velocity goes between 9 to 60 km per second, and the radius uh, is less than 1 kiloparsec. So you put all together this, you find the, ma the model, uh, together and uh, the best fit parameter you have that, uh, of course, you can see by your own how the NFW doesn't fit. Uh, but more important, this, the maximum model is uh, basically at the level of the stellar mass equal zero. So the model, standard model of a disk plus a, a H1 disk plus NFW profile is not responsible for this rotation curve, exactly like the others, because if you see, these are the smallest normal spiral, which, which the velocity, the maximum velocity is 80 km per second, and these are the ones which are, have a three or four times smaller velocity. So, but you see that the, the profile is exactly the same, so it's the profile completely dominated by a core the dark matter halo. So then uh, it is very, very different, difficult that this object, uh, the baryon, could have made such thing. Just to give an example, so we have 40 objects, we have the, the central density, 
is the core radius a uh, related almost in in a very very good way these are due to the spirals these are the dwarf spheroidals which are, by the way are very very difficult to understand to to study because the the kinematics is complex and these are the new object that we have new 36 object which clean no, which cover the space between spirals and, and dwarf spheroidal. So not only we have uh, a core radius, but this core radius correlates with the central density. Again, this is something, I mean, it seems for these objects that baryons is very difficult, they can achieve this, any kind of baryons, anything. Then we can use uh, a very supermassive black hole in giant uh, spirals. So M87 is a giant uh, spiral, okay? So uh, it is very likely it is the most, the biggest galaxy around us, uh, and the black hole is one of the biggest that we know. Uh, and we will see immediately. Okay, so it is at the center of Virgo clusters. So the black hole, you know that we have all the beautiful jet coming from the center, and the kinematics in the inner part makes the mass of the black hole. But when you look at the mass also of the stars, you see that the influence of the radius of this big black hole, which is 6.5, 10 to 9 solar masses, is limited, is quite limited, because we are talking about one kiloparsec. Outside, outside this region, of course, the black hole cannot, of course, can send its energy, but it is very, very uh, focused. And uh, so we have a big black hole, but the galaxy is even bigger. In fact, the length scale, you have half right radius, of 50 kiloparsec. So we are in the perfect cases, no? But in these cases, as I say, as shown before, we are in the cases in which here, with the mass, this here, is completely unable to, to from a initial cold matter profile, become a cored galaxy. What it is found very, very, very recently instead is the contrary. So we have, we model these giant galaxies in a standard way. This galaxy, by the way, the anisotropic parameter doesn't play a role, but we are quite lucky, so these galaxies. This again, I, I say this, a giant galaxy, the radius is one megaparsec, and the mass is about one, ten to four solar masses. By the way, you could even consider this as a mini cluster. And we know that in cluster, the dark matter distribution is like the NFW profile. But the surprise is that we have instead the core. So we have a core which is about 100 kiloparsec, so extremely giant core. And all the other parameters, they are almost the same parameter that we found, we say, for instance, in the dwarf spheroidal or in dwarf spirals for objects that there are 10 to 6 smaller objects. So dark matter comes a sort of matrioska, so the dark matter itself is uh, similar, it has a lot of similarity. By the way, similarity also lambda CDM has the same uh, properties, but they are not the one which we need to uh, understand the emotions of inner, in inner galaxies, including this one. And uh, so it's important to say that the also in this galaxy, the black hole cannot do, because again, the length scale is too big with respect to the influence radius of the, the, the black hole. So it's very, very hard that the massive black hole could have done something about this galaxy. And uh, so the situation is this one. Okay? So this is the galaxy. And this is the dark matter core for M87. This is even bigger than we expected. Usually in other galaxies like our own, the dark matter was about T here. Yeah, the dark matter core was comp at the same level of the, of the baryons distribution. And so one could say that they could have interacted in some way. So here yeah, the dark matter core is giant. It's completely unrelated to the dark matter distribution, at least. And uh, instead, you see that the we can have the Virgo cluster profile, which is this one, 
which nicely agrees with the, with the galaxy M87, which is at the center of the Virgo cluster, exactly at the Virgo radius. So we have perfect uh, the, its place, uh, uh, we know perfectly the distribution of this uh, giant galaxy. So what was the, the situation until now? So we had sphere, we have a spheroidal, we have a normal spiral, LSB, spiral elliptical, and this is the density times the co-radius, so rho zero, rho zero, this is the central density of the, of the dark matter in galaxies, and this is the magnitude. Okay, this is a constant, a roughly constant, although we are talking about galaxies which are completely different one by the other. So where stays uh, M87? So M87 stays here. Okay, so I had to go outside the plot. And uh, this is the test, again, on the fact, uh, again, the fact that we have constant, I will think, okay, so I now can say, that is due to the properties of dark matter. So, the uh, lambda CDM 0.1, in the sense that uh, it is baryons enters and save the, 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 the game, uh, I don't think is uh, correct, because, uh, at least in this case, we have shown in both cases, uh, okay, we have, okay, so we have shown in, uh, in both at very, very small cases, we have dark matter which surround a lot of galaxies, most of the galaxy, okay, most of the galaxy, and uh, they, are, uh, they are very shallow. So again, on the other side, biggest galaxy, so I show to today the M87, but the same thing applies also to other big galaxies, that again, uh, we don't have uh, a, really a method to, to, to transform the dark matter, they have a very giant halo, a giant core radius. So, so all galaxies, any independent of the mass, has its own Okay. Okay. Okay, so Darmati distribution are shown to be very shallow, to be with respect to the one which comes from the lambda CDM, and to be to have certain re, certain uh, regularities, they cannot be due to the action of of baryons. Now, okay, I think I am almost finished. Okay, so the conclusion. So then uh, the nature of dark matter uh, is certainly uh, a new mystery. Okay? So then because uh, the, the fact that from theoretical point of view, neutralinos, cold dark matter, they have the, a lot of uh, uh, advantages in the sense that there was inside uh, may reason to prefer cold matter. When uh, the, you see that the dark matter acts with, uh, with baryons in certain way, so then you have a new particle, and the new particle is certainly uh, not, we don't have a solution for a new particle because many, 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 as, uh, I would say, proposal are on the same ground at this moment. So this is something which people should realize that, uh, and uh, we don't want to use the, the way by Pirone. Pirone was a, a, a Greek philosopher, which was the first one to realize the, uh, the, the, to ask the interaction between the nature and the man, or the nature and the future, uh, God and man, and to any question which was very, very well posed, he answered, we don't know. And then, we don't know, and we don't know. So it's a sort of, we don't know, 
uh, theory. But this is true because there is no way that the dark matter should be similar to, to the particle that we know today, and uh, at least could be completely different uh, sector of dark matter uh, because in the moment in which at least uh, neutralinos or WIMP seem at a high level to not be the, the cases, then uh, hic sunt leones, as I will say, our, uh, I will say, or we say everything could happen, uh, as uh, one could say. Okay, I finished.